Okay, so now Bucks offense versus Kansas City Chiefs defense. I already talked about the other side of the ball, previewing that in a different video. These videos are going to be kind of broad. I'm going to get into more intricate details about sort of individual matchups as you know, the two weeks goes on. We got plenty of time to talk about this, but yeah. Well, let's just get into how I think broadly the Buccaneers offense will attack the Chiefs defense and how the Chiefs defense will attack the Buccaneers offense. So for one thing, we got to start off with the fact that the first time these two teams played, uh, there's some that you can take away from and there isn't a ton of sort of the same thing I said about the last uh, two Buccaneers games is let's look through the first time they played and let's see what there is there and let's see what there is to throw out. There is a bit to throw out. I think there's a lot to take note of. Let's start with the bit to throw out kind of. So like on this one, it's actually a cover zero. Uh, so it's man coverage across the board and Mike Evans, that's the guy you want to hit when it's man coverage across the board running a curl route. But really what's going to happen, and this was still before the Buccaneers bye week, and I think that bye week helped them a lot. You're going to see that Brady and Evans still aren't going to be on the same page here. Watch, uh, Mike Evans is going to get open here, but Brady throws it really later than I think Evans was expecting it to come. Uh, you know, just not on the same page. Evans thought it was going to be one way. It turned out to not be that way. Those plays can still happen, but they're happening a lot less, and they still happen a good amount against Kansas City. Like this one's another one where this time it's going to be zone coverage and Cameron Brate's running a quick route over the middle. That's where Brady's going to want to try and throw it to. Watch. Once this play is uh, starts, you see Brady kind of just fires it there. Really quick throw. And Brait is open right here. And it seems like he's just going to have a hard time getting his hands up in position to make the grab because, you know, the ball came out so quick. It goes through Brait's hands, so either way, Brait still has to make that grab. But again, it's kind of just those fluky things of Tampa Bay beating themselves to some degree. That happened the first time these two teams played. And it was interesting, because I do think that these man coverage plays were kind of working. I actually made a pretty long video talking about this game after the fact. I believe it's entitled Fire Bruce Arians, but it was really me defending Bruce Arians. Uh, it, was, it was with a question mark at the end. Fire Bruce Arians question mark. But it was more me defending him and talking about what they did well in the second half. But now I want to show this one because I think what's very interesting about the way this game went was even though the Kansas City Chiefs were getting stops uh, when they were playing man coverage, it was a lot of, as I said, the Bucks beating themselves. Those were two plays. There was about three or four more ones, uh, usually on third downs, that really uh, affected them. And Tampa Bay was able to get some success against man coverage, largely through their tight ends. And that's Probably the biggest mismatch Tampa Bay has going in their favor on this side of the ball, which would be their tight ends going up against Kansas City safeties, Sorensen and Matthew. Really, uh, Cameron Brait and Rob Gronkowski were able to get the better of them the first time they played. This one is going to be Gronkowski versus Sorensen. It's a cover two man and just a little, uh, you know, quick route over to middle. This is nothing too fancy here, but this is the kind of thing that Gronkowski can get open on. Tom Brady uh, takes the snap, and it's not even really bad coverage by Sorensen that much. It's just kind of Gronkowski's bigger than him, and that's a key, key factor there. There was also this one where, uh, listen, uh, as much as I love Tyron Matthew, I, I do think that you would probably rather have Matthew just being in coverage as opposed to having to play man coverage one-on-one. -on -one. And also, again, Brait got the better of him on, on this play, where it's a very similar idea, this time Brait running to the outside. But it's, again, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup against one of these good receiving tight ends Tampa Bay has, and that's an issue for Kansas City. Tom Brady takes the snap. Cameron Brait does get open quickly. He makes the grab and they're able to pick up a first down and pick up a, a decent chunk play as well. And so that is something that Tampa Bay was able to do. And honestly, they were able to get Kansas City out of man coverage, which to me, that's the big thing for Kansas City. Play man coverage. Don't play zone coverage because Tampa Bay had way more success against zone than against man. Watch. This one was a huge one. It's going to be a cover two zone play. And you're going to see that it's going to be Gronkowski running a route that's going to kind of get into the eye of the storm area over the middle of the field. That's where Brady's going to want to try and throw it to. And part of what makes this work well as well is that Kansas City, they love their disguises. I think that's kind of an issue, though, sometimes against Brady because you try to disguise things so well. But Brady can read those things in like an instant. So it's a fun chess match, but sometimes... Just play your coverage, and that's kind of why I like man, because you don't have to disguise. You don't you really don't have to disguise as much. You can instead just have one or two guys disguising. But watch, Brady takes a snap. He reads this play immediately. He does hit Gronkowski over the middle, and they get a big chunk play. And I think that's one of the most intriguing things about this Buccaneers football team is the fact that 
while their offense doesn't necessarily always look pretty, when they get their conversions, they tend to be big plays. They don't tend to get a lot of like, oh, that was a good five-yard gain, but they do get these big chunk plays. This one's another good example of that, where it's going to be zone coverage for Kansas City. Again, this is the cover two zone, and Tampa Bay has a concept that can work really well against zone. Mike Evans runs deep, so, you know, he's a great deep threat. You have to respect him. Safety will take that away. You then are going to have a tight end run over the middle. That's going to be Gronkowski, who, listen, Gronkowski had a big day, and him and Brait are going to be maybe the keys to Tampa Bay success. And then also for uh, Tampa Bay, you ha you're going to run a play action, which hopefully will get the linebackers to move in. And even if not, you then have your back run out to the flat. That can push Kansas City players further in as well. Wides opens up that gap over the middle. But watch how the linebackers don't really move in at all. This is actually well played by them. So, you know, the safety does go further deep. But the thing here, and I think why the play action kind of worked, is you're going to see that Tampa Bay's offensive line does a good job on this play, and I think that getting some play actions can just sort of fool your opposing defensive line enough that it can give Brady more time to get these shots down the field, which, you know, were kind of hit, hit, and hit or miss in this game, and I don't know necessarily how well Kansas City can do getting pressure with four. While I said that I think that, you know, Tampa Bay, their mindset should be try to get pressure with four. I said that in my last video. I think it's the complete opposite for Kansas City. Kansas City, blitz, blitz, and blitz some more because these situations are not what you want. I also think it kind of goes to show maybe no, you know, Kansas City, they're not going to be afraid of your play action. So if you want to run the ball and get some yards that way with their two deep safeties, do that. But uh, play action might not work the way you want. At least uh, you're going to have to be uh, very picky with it. Like, look, the running game can absolutely work. This is going to be a rushing play, and there's, uh, you know, kind of two safeties deep. I mean, Matthew's uh, currently lined up where he can somewhat get into the play, but he's going to drop back in the coverage. And really, I've, you know, highlighted three blocks right here. This is left tackle Donovan Smith, Ali Marpet, the left guard, and then center Ryan Jensen. And with all one-on-one -on -one matchups, this is the matchup that Tampa Bay likes and they will try to exploit. And I think that we could see them having a good day on the ground. Watch how Brady is going to hand this ball off to uh, Ronald Jones, who does a good job running. That's another interesting little wrinkle is Ronald Jones had a big day in this game. But since then, he's lost the starting spot to uh, Leonard Fournette. Part of that was injury, but Fournette's also just outplayed him. So that'll be interesting to see exactly, uh, you know, what will they do there? I honestly think that the way to beat this Chiefs defense might be to figure out what their strength is and figure out how to get around it. And one of the things that the Chiefs love to do on defense is, you know, they're playing this cover two. You notice I've, I've shown a lot of cover two with them. But what's interesting about the way that they're playing cover two and the way that they like to play cover two is both of their safeties play a lot further in. I mean, look at where they're both lined up right now. They're both lined up like you'll see defensive backs line up further away than where they're at. And I mean, uh, cornerbacks line up further away than where they're at. And so kind of what you want to do a little bit is if they're going to be over the middle of the field and they're going to be kind of shallow is maybe you can still take shots deep towards the sideline. This is actually a, a fourth down and threes, but trust me, they do absolutely uh, play a lot further towards the middle and a lot further in than most teams do when they play their cover two man. And so for Tampa Bay, Evans is running a route where it's going to eventually be a deep route, but it, you know, he, he going to go off to the side a little bit to kind of not make it clear what he's doing until he actually gets deep. And so that's the, the hope is just he can get by the safety and also by his assigned man. So that's kind of what Tampa Bay wants to do, they like to take their shots. Usually they like to take their shots against a cover one play, but against Kansas City's cover two, you can still take shots. Whereas a lot of other cover twos, you're kind of forced to, you know, just play underneath. But watch, Brady takes a snap and Mike Evans is going to do a good job of getting open. Now, I have to think that Prashad Breland might end up on Evans more, but again, uh, you saw in this exact play, Breland was forced on Antonio Brown. They double teamed uh, Chris Godwin, so they only had a three-man rush. But that that eventually leaves someone with a one-on-one -on -one matchup out of those big three for Tampa Bay. That's what you take advantage of if you're Tom Brady. And if you're the Chiefs, maybe one thing you could do is something I said that Tampa Bay should do, which is I think Tampa Bay should sometimes double-team Hill and double-teams Kelsey and sort of let someone else beat you, even though it's not ideal. I think for Kansas City, 
uh, Breland can probably come pretty close to shutting down either Brown, Godwin, or Evans. So keep him on one of those guys, and that's at least a good situation. And then you can double the other two, and you could be actually in decent shape. So I think that might be something that we see, even though we didn't really see that the, the first time these two teams played. And finally, I want to talk about this play. I'm probably going to make a whole video devoted to plays like this, but again, just sort of brushing on the topics, talking about broad strokes, and I'm going to give my prediction for who will win in a minute. But this play is uh, the biggest thing that Tampa Bay has to worry about. What's going to happen is that Scotty Miller is running a deep route against Brashad Breland, who, you know, I like. I think he's really good. He's, you know, big game Breland. He shows up in the big moments and also shows up in the small moments. And Scotty Miller running a deep route, he is fast, but what's really going to be key here is going to be what happens with this blitz protection because that's what Kansas City is running. They're running a cover one blitz and Tampa Bay, this is with Ronald Jones in the game and you're going to see why Ronald Jones ended up losing the starting job. It wasn't because of his rushing ability. As you see, Jones tries to pick up this blitz right here. Uh, this is, listen, it's Tyron Matthews. So like, you know, I'm going to cut him some slack because it is a great, uh, you know, blitzing safety. But at the same time, you have to at least get in his way to some degree. The pressure comes immediately, though. Brady just throws one up, and clearly there was nowhere near enough air on it that what that is what Brady wanted. I still don't love that decision. Don't throw to your fourth best receiver who's getting covered by their best corner. I just think that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, one of the issues is just that while Tampa Bay has wide receiver depth, can depth, Kansas City has cornerback depth. I mean, they have Rashad Venton, Tredavious Ward, Rashad Breland, uh, Legarius Sneed, so... Uh, they have a lot of guys who can play, so even with the injuries. I think that you know, I, I think that those four could all play. So that's a a big situation for Kansas City for sure. But still, uh, you still would like to avoid uh, Brashad Breland, I think, if you can. But also, you have to pick up that blitz, and and really, I think that's Kansas City's key to success is run man coverage blitz. You'll get, get burnt a couple times, but don't worry about it because you're going to get burnt a lot more if you play that stupid zone coverage that they were playing in the second half of last game. So, And, and it wasn't just the whole second half, but really I think that's where you kind of saw, uh, you know, they weren't perfect. Kansas City wasn't perfect early on, so they tried to make adjustments and kind of just overcorrected and made things worse. So I think that they'll do better defensively this time, but I also think the Bucks will do better offensively this time, so it should be a fun game. I am going to say, after looking through this, I think that I'm going to give the Buccaneers 27 points, and I said it would be a 12-possession game, which means that I have the Kansas City Chiefs winning, despite, you know, obviously being a Bucks fan. I do think that this is, uh, the Chiefs are a better team, but I think it's close. I think that there is definitely upset potential here. I think it could go either way, and it could come down to one or two plays, and for Tampa Bay, I mean, that's, it's not a bad situation to be in. I think this is definitely, all you have to do is win one game to win the Super Bowl, you'll take that, even if you are slight underdogs. Kansas City's just really good, though, and I think that there's a lot more ways for them to stop the Bucks offense than for the Bucks uh, defense to stop the Chiefs offense. So I think it'll be close, but that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.